Chapter 1 In the middle of the journey of our life, I came to my senses in a dark forest, for I had lost the straight path. Oh, how hard it is to tell what a dense, wild, and tangled wood this was, the thought of which renews my fear. Dante, Inferno, Canto 1, Lines 1-6 through six. As Alitalia Flight 1675 began making its final descent into Florence, I nervously fanned the pages of my copy of The Divine Comedy. Two decades of sitting in my damp basement had left a powdery coating of mildew that wafted into the air around me. For a moment, I saw it. Tiny specks and spores floating idly in the rays of sun pouring through the window. I hadn't read the Inferno portion of Dante's classics since I was an undergrad. At nineteen, of course, the freight those first few lines carried would have been utterly lost on me. Now, reading them with thirty-nine-year-old eyes, I wished I could call Dante up and schedule a lunch. I had a long list of questions for him. Through the patina of condensation on the plane's window, I surveyed the Tuscan countryside below and knew that I had lost the straight path and entered a dense, wild, and tangled wood. Two weeks earlier, I'd been Chase Falson, founding pastor of the largest contemporary evangelical church in New England. My 14 years in the ministry were a church growth success story. I'd considered myself one of the privileged few the heavens had endowed with a perfectly true compass. I'd known who I was and where I was going, and I'd been certain that one day I would see the boxes neatly checked off next to each of my life goals. I'd like myself. A lot. These days, lots of people dismiss you when they discover your cut from evangelical cloth. Once you've been outed as a conservative Christian, they assume you're a right-wing, self-satisfied fundamentalist with all the mental acuity of a houseplant. Every Christmas, my Uncle Bob greets me at the front door of my parents' house, gripping a martini in one hand and a fat Cuban cigar in the other. He slaps me on the back and yells, Look who's here! It's Mr. E. Evangelical! It's disconcerting. But Bob's an idiot and can't help himself. For many a year, the terms New England and evangelical have been almost mutually exclusive. My church history professor told me that Jonathan Edwards referred to New England as the graveyard of preachers. Baleful as that sounded, it didn't dissuade me from heeding the call to head east after seminary. My three closest friends were incredulous when I told them about my decision to start a church in Thackeray, Connecticut, a bedroom community 35 miles from Wall Street. Have you lost your mind? Even God's afraid of the Northeast, they said. I laughed. It's not so bad. I grew up there. But you could go to some mega church in California or Chicago, they argued. Truth be told, I wasn't interested in working for a church someone else had built. I wanted to be the pioneer who broke the code for the spiritually barren Northeast, heroically advancing the cause of Christ into the most gospel-resistant region of the country. As a native, I was certain I knew the cultural landscape well enough to reach the Ivy Leaguers, whose homes lay discreetly hidden behind stone walls and wrought iron gates. A little self-important, but there you have it. And yet, I had delivered the goods. I built a church where, at last count, over 3,000 people came to worship every Sunday. A Herculean feat in a part of the world that's suspicious of things that are either big or new. With the benefit of hindsight, I can see now that Putnam Hill Community Church had been built on the appeal of my belief in a God who could be managed and explained. I'd held such an unbending confidence in my conservative evangelical theology 
that even some of the more skeptical locals had been won over. After I'd put in years of 70-hour work weeks, Putnam Hill had become a church brimming with young Wall Streeters and their families, many of whom had come because they were disappointed that happiness hadn't come as optional equipment in their Lexus SUVs. That world had detonated ten days ago, Gazing down on the terracotta roofs dotting the approaching Tuscan hills, I found myself on a forced leave of absence, and chances were good that when I returned home, I would be out of a job. <laughs>